Hi, my name is Cem Demircioğlu. Welcome to another edition of Introduction to Azure Data Factory series. In this demonstration, I will go through how you can integrate your Azure Data Factory pipelines into Visual Studio theme system. Natively, it's not supported, but with a little bit of workaround, you can make Visual Studio to work with your Azure Data Factory components. In order to make this demonstration, I already have a, an Azure Data Factory that I already created, which is not a necessary condition, but um, I just wanted to start from somewhere so that I don't need to expose my um, storage keys and some sensitive information. In order to make this um, possible, what you need to have are two things. Uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2013 SDK installed and also modeling SDK for Visual Studio 2013. Now let's go to our demonstration. I have here is my pipeline. What I would like to do is I'd like to add a new data set, a new table. But this new table should be dependent upon where I am installing um, this these bits or when I where I'm deploying these bits to. If it is uh, if my destination is going to be a test environment, for instance, a debug environment, I want the table name to be debug table. If it is a release environment, I want the table name to be release table. That's the main idea. I want to make the, um, the demonstration as easy as possible. And here's my um, JSON template. How, uh, first, let me show you the, the project. I created a dummy C Sharp project. There is nothing in my program.cs file. But um, inside of this dummy project, I created a template. And in order to make that happen, you just right click, add new item, and scroll down a little bit. And you are going to see text templates right over here. Um, if you're not seeing this text template, then that means you did not install these two components. So you have to install Visual Studio SDK and also Modeling SDK. Don't, don't forget about it. So once you install those, you are going to have um, this particular uh, template and it's going to have .tt extension. Now, since we have this template, what are we going to do with it? I created a template for creating a table. This looks like really similar to our regular JSON table definitions. The only difference is the name of the table is actually a parameter. Here you can see the parameter definition. The rest is static. But think about this example as a starting point and you can extend it by anything you want to be parameterized, including the structure, for instance. You can derive the structure based on metadata that's coming from your database, for instance. You can define your link service name based on, again, metadata. You can get your um, keys, storage keys, based on metadata. So everything can be parameterized, and this JSON file essentially becomes dynamic. So you, we have this JSON file. Now let's take a look at the top portion of the JSON file because that's where we define most of our parameters. Um, first, you need to define that, hey, I'm going to use a particular language, in this case, C-sharp, and it's most specific, um, and um, this is a template. And then we need to define, um, we need to include a couple assemblies, and we need to include a couple namespaces. And finally, we need to say, okay, once this template is executed, what will be the, the, the outputs extension file? Um, output extension. And in our case, it's going to be .json. Um, before going into, or let me go into these next three lines. So these next three lines are just to figure out whether I am in debug mode or whether I'm in release mode. That's the only thing that they're doing. Here I'm defining my table name as a variable. And based on whether I'm in debug mode or release mode, the table name changes. In the debug mode, I call it debug table. In the release mode, I call it release table. Here, as you can see. If you want to see the 
the, the, the particular templates in action. For instance, I'm selecting debug. I am right now on the templates and I can click on it. It usually looks like this and you can expand it. If I click on the JSON table, you are going to see that it's in debug. Let's go back and let's change this one to release. My computer just thought about a little bit and you can see that it is not right now in release mode. That is the beauty of um, CodeGen T4 templates. Um, you can parameterize everything and make everything um, come together at runtime based on metadata that you are providing. And think about this one as your different environments. You could have a test environment, you could have a production environment, you could have a UAT environment, you could have a dev environment, and all those environments can have different connection strings, different parameters, um, different structures. And based on those structures, um, the, the application can generate your scripts, your JSON files on the fly for you. Now, let's do one step further and here is my data factor as i said and i want to deploy that package and assume that let's assume that this particular um, data factor is residing right now in release mode okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to build it and the build process takes a little bit of time because of the fact that I'm right now, as part of my build process, I'm also deploying my object. And here is the output of the deployment object. I just deployed my release table. And if I go back to over here, you're going to see my release table deployed to my Azure Data Factory. Um, now let's go back. And let's say this time I'm going to be deploying to my debug um, environment and I'll do it again I'll rebuild the solution and pretty soon you are going to see that my new debug table is going to appear right here as you can see so how this magic happened behind the scenes I don't have uh, team system foundation service you can make it happen through team system foundation service as a PowerShell task um, right now, I, I don't have a Team System Foundation server, but I can use already existing solution properties and configuration managers in order to make this one happen. And here's the, the, the trick behind the scenes. Um, I come to the project properties and I click on build events. And here you can see a post build event that looks like this. It is accepting two parameters. One of them is the actual um, name of the application that it's going to run, which is PowerShell. And then it has got a PowerShell script to execute. And that PowerShell script is actually right over here, which defines some regular things like what's my resource group name, what's my data factory name. I need to switch the resource manager in order to create something inside of the data factory. Um, here I'm defining my uh, data factory as a variable and then here's my file name for my table adf.table.json which is created dynamically um, and here's the, the command to, uh, to create the file, create the table. So what is happening is behind the scenes once the build is successful it goes out and runs this script and that script is actually calling this using this particular ADF table.json and deploying the, the table definition into my Azure Data Factory. So as I told you before, in order to make this one happen, the table templates happen, not the table templates, the CodeGen uh, T4 templates uh, happen. We need two things, Visual Studio 2013 SDK and Modeling SDK for Microsoft Visual Studio 2013. Once you install these two, you are good to go. So if you have questions or comments, please let me know and um, I'll be happy to answer. My email address is cemd at abacustms.com or you can just comment on this video. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.